We can also get rotation within a strike slip fault zone. Now, if you think of this as the fault zone, say this is a mile wide, and each of these blocks is a segment within that fault zone, you know, we can get some of it sliding, some of it doing these sl um, close to perpendicular type fault motions. This is again like when we had the playing cards of the dominoes and we were shearing them and then they were sliding past each other like that. So those are part of the um, other <coughs> sorry, um, part of the other um, uh, Rydell faults. I think my cold medicine's wearing off here. Sorry, guys. Um, but as those blocks start shifting, they can start breaking. And as they break up and continue to shear, the blocks begin to rotate. You can see these three arrows tied to these blocks and they were originally all at the same angle. Even here we get a little bit of rotation between this one that just sheared and these ones that have tilted. There's some rotation, but if you get the um, extensive breakup of the rock into chunks, there's more and more rotation. So some of these have rotated as much as 90 degrees. Now looking back at the um, transform fault not being a pure straight line for its whole length, we get pull-apart basins and we get uplift depending on whether it's a restraining bend or a releasing bend. So in this case, the direction of the bend creates extension. This is a pull-apart basin. There is transtension here because as the two blocks try to move, it's stretching this area. <coughs> On the other hand, this bend is going in the other direction, and so we're getting pressure building up as those two parts of the block are pressing against each other. And so this is transpression occurring, and we get reverse faults and uplift. A lot of times it is not all simple straight line uplift or um, depression. It actually occurs in what we call flower structures. You can see here where the circle with the X's is going into the screen, the circle with the dot coming out of the screen towards you. Also shown with the arrows on the top of the blocks. And this is a restraining bend with transpression. So we have reverse faulting and uplift. And this is called a flower structure. In the other system, uh, situation where we have transtension, it's a releasing bend. Again, this block going into the screen, this block coming out of the screen and we can see the bend is going the other direction. So we have the releasing bend, we have normal faulting and um, subsidence of the land, getting a basin here. This is called a reverse flower structure or positive and negative. We can see this kind of thing in real life, um, the textbook has pencil drawing versions of this, but here is the Tamales Bay along the San Andreas Fault 
in Google Earth. And you can see here's the bay. This is a large <coughs> area where the land subsided due to a releasing bend negative flower structure type activity with normal faulting and land subsidence. On the other hand, at another part of the San Andreas Fault, north of the San Luis Ab Abiso, not Abispo, we have raised topography. We have hills and mountains because of a restraining bend within the San Andreas that caused uplift, a positive flower structure. And this over here is not Google Earth getting pixelated, by the way. This is what farms look like from high up, where people have lots of square fields, and it ends up looking like that. And then you can also see in road cuts a lot of the deformation that occurs. So here we have folding and some faulting. And so since this is compressional, we know that this was part of a positive flower structure, part of a restraining bend at some point in the past, and there was lots of deformation that results in this gorgeous road cut. Really, really cool looking. <coughs> Within those restraining bends like this, or releasing bends like this on the left, we get an array of normal or reverse faults, not a single one. And so they're called duplexes. We can get the transtensile duplex, where it's a series of normal faults that are accommodating that extension. Or a transpressive duplex, which is a series of reverse faults accommodating that compression. We can see on an actual fault map along the San Andreas. We have the San Andreas Fault is the dark black line running through the middle here. And we have this restraining bend. And so there are normal, uh, I'm sorry, there are reverse faults all around it. There would be reverse faults within the fault zone, but at this scale on the map you can't see that. But you can see that extending far out from the fault, there can be reverse faults to help accommodate all of that compression that happens in that restraining bend. The longer a fault system, you know, a, a strike slip fault system is there with a large restraining bend, the more and more that has to be you know, released and accounted for, so the reverse faults are going to extend further and further away from that strike-slip fault. And we can see there are lots of other faults running um, some parallel or close to parallel, some running close to perpendicular. <coughs> you know, these other some of them are major faults, some of them are just Rydell faults. But it's a very complex system. It is not as simple as one block just sliding past the other. <coughs>